I'm Michael Lang and I'm the Scientific Diving Officer for the Smithsonian Institution. One of the main functions of a diving officer is to make sure that the scientists who actually use scuba as a research tool underwater do so in a safe and scientifically productive manner. We uh, study um, biology, ecology, systematics, uh, and other processes that occur in, in coastal uh, ecosystems. We have great opportunity to dive many remote places around the world. One of the most exciting, actually, is, uh, is the Antarctic, McMurdo Station in particular. Once we get there, we encounter temperatures between minus 30 and minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit with a severe wind chill factor. It's actually warmer underwater where the temperature is only minus 1.8 degrees centigrade. However, we need to ensure that we have enough thermal protection in the form of undergarments with thinsulate and dry suits with hand protection and hoods with face protection and such to prevent any kind of thermal or frostbite injuries. The very first thing that is noticeable to any seasoned diver is the extreme underwater visibility that we encounter, which has been measured in excess of 800 feet horizontal visibility. The second thing you notice is the very unique adaptations of the endemic organisms there, meaning that they have evolved to live in this extreme cold environment on a year-round basis and adapted to that particular environment. The very first biggest thing you probably encounter is a Weddell seal. The Weddell seals are master breath hole divers that have been recorded to 800 foot depth for over an hour duration on a single breath. Some of the more interesting uh, invertebrate organisms there are sea spiders that basically fill the palm of your hand, they're so large. We have isopods, which basically look like a cockroach on steroids and get about four inches long. There are sea stars that are live bears, meaning they have live juvenile sea stars that when fully developed crawl away from the parent organism. Uh, towards the end of the dive, coming back up through the water column, you may well see a sea butterfly on your way up to the ice hole. And there's also ice fish that have developed a mechanism to prevent their blood from freezing. And they basically live in the ice sheet just at the surface of the water. But uh, it's counterintuitively comfortable with the equipment we're wearing and the thermal undergarments. So 35 to 40 minutes is about the average time you can endure. Uh, I'm a marine biologist by training and I recognized early on in my career that in order to study the marine environment you basically had to get underwater and therefore undertook a series of training courses in science diving and progressed to the point where I could start teaching other scientists how to use this tool effectively and safely underwater. In order to conduct the underwater research in a safe fashion, we have a science diving program and that basically entails uh, medical supervision and certification of our scientists, uh, training and operational standards that we meet. And uh, also we do quite a bit of research on uh, diving physiology and testing of equipment that best meets our needs in the scientific community. Uh, the Antarctic continent is a very unique and interesting place to study. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty has been in place for 50 years now. The Antarctic Treaty has allowed scientists from many different nations to work collaboratively uh, in the Antarctic and has shed quite a bit of light on our understanding of climate change, especially in the polar regions.